my name is Dr. Maria Alejandra Pinero de Plaza. I work with Flinders University and the National Health and Medical Research Council Center of Research Excellence in Frailty and Healthy Aging. I am a postdoctoral research fellow in the area of knowledge translation and fundamentals of care. I'm chair of MECFS South Australia and a director on the board of MECFS Australia. Um, there are up to 260,000 Australians with myalgic encephalomyelitis, of whom one in four are homebound or bedbound, which means of the estimated 600,000 Australians with disabilities who rarely leave home, as many as 60,000 might be someone with MECFS. I'm the consumer co lead on the research alongside Alejandra. And it's my responsibility to consult with and to represent health consumers within the project team. We co-created this definition of frail homebound and bedridden people. And we co-created this definition because we wanted to be all inclusive. So when we are talking about frail homebound and bedridden people, we are not talking about a, population, a sector of the population of certain age we are not talking about a sector of the population with certain health conditions. We are talking about a perceived condition initially that is connected to the inability to leave home because you have an energy limiting uh, health issues, because you have psychological issues, it could be allergies. So it's a broad definition, basically is a set of distinct populations that live with a series of complex debilitating and injuries that do, do not allow them to leave home unless they have sometimes the help of other persons. So that's, uh, they feel trapped and unable to leave home. That's uh, our definition. So within that definition, as Penelope mentioned, we found that 600,000 Australians do not leave home as often as they would like to because of their health conditions. So that's meeting perfectly. However, the number can be bigger. This uh, data, the, the Australian Bureau of Statistics collected, was related mostly to disability. Well, if we think of disability, we have one in three Australians with uh, Australians with disabilities, they are considered with the, the group of extreme disabilities. So we are talking about a number of 1.4 million Australians without the with, with the need of support someone else, whether it's for communication, for moving, etc. So we are talking about a gigantic group. However, homebound people, especially the people that we have been researching, they don't have support from the government because many of the diseases that they live with are not considered disabilities. So that's why we are observing this humongous gap because if let's say you have some mental health condition or maybe some sort of autoimmune disease or a set of allergies that do not allow you to be exposed in the normal environment that everyone else is, then you are not able to leave home, then you are not able to go to the GP, and the GP is not funded to visit you at home. So frail homebound and bedridden people are pop distinct populations that do not leave home as often as they would like to and need support from someone else. And that this is separate from a temporary illness or a short-term disease. In 2018, Ricky Buchanan, who's an Australian who is bedbound, wrote a report called Just Invisible, and it drew attention to the problem that if you're homebound or bedridden and you live in the community, then the healthcare system treats you as if you don't exist. And the report details many of the problems faced by homebound or bedridden people trying to access the medical system and why access to the NDIS won't fix these issues and what governments and policymakers need to do to begin to level the playing field. So I have been sending the link to this report to anyone and everyone who I thought might take action on it. And one afternoon, I was sitting with Alejandra at an information session on the Medical Research Future Fund, the MRFF. I mentioned Ricky's report, and Alejandra asked me to send her the link. And from that, the Research and Innovation Project was born. As an example, I'm going to 
mention briefly a huge international study that was done some years ago of people with bowel cancer. The study found that overwhelmingly people with bowel cancer wanted treatments to improve their quality of life, while researchers were focused on increasing length of life. So when consumers are not engaged with researchers, then the research questions risk being irrelevant. And this is exacerbated when the cohort being studied is unfamiliar. Some people who best know the experiences or health conditions being studied are those with lived experience. If you don't consult with them, the researchers risk poorly designed studies, misdirected analysis and incorrect in conclusions. In the case of homebound and bedridden people, they've been hidden and overlooked in the community. It took me three years just to uncover the statistic of 600,000 Australians with disabilities who rarely leave home because that figure is unpublished. So there's so little knowledge in the public domain about this cohort that without health consumer collaboration, researchers would not know where to start or how to find these people. All five of these needs were indicated by 90% or more of the survey participants. So the level of agreement is really high. Uh, the top two needs involve educating others about needs and barriers. It's hardly surprising when we're hearing from a group of people labelled by Ricky Buchanan as just invisible. There's a desperate need for health professionals, service providers and government agencies to have a better understanding, firstly, that this group exists and then what their needs are and how to reduce barriers to, to accessing much needed services. The next three identified priorities are for access. Uh, access to disability support through the NDIS or aged care packages, access to Medicare subsidised home visits from health professionals, and access to telehealth. The loss of telehealth access on the 21st of July 2020 was a huge blow. People who had not seen a GP face-to-face -face within the previous 12 months, that is arguably those very people who need telehealth most, were no longer funded. And this would be such a simple fix to help people who are homebound. If you note that there are currently 400,000 people with NDIS plans, many of whom are not homebound. This means that of the 600,000 Australians who are so disabled that they really leave home, it's reasonable to assert that an enormous number do not have access to funded disability supports and anecdotal evidence supports this assertion. The top five needs are, uh, are uh, showing numbers with more than 90%. And we have over other responses that are as well relevant. So 90% have responded, indicated that they want a standing telephone or online consults, basically what we know as telehealth, to cover patients in the metropolitan areas or metropolitan locations and cities, because sometimes these kind of services are provided for rural patients, but not for people in, in the big cities, because the assumption that the health system uh, uh, it, it works for people who attend uh, the consultation. So what we need is the understanding that not everyone can attend the consultation and people in the metropolitan areas needs of telehealth and, and, and remote services. 66% of our survey respondents indicated that they have three or more chronic conditions. And this is very relevant because this shows the complexity of the needs that this population are living and suffering and experiencing every day. 85% of respondents see themselves and their health much poorer than the, their people of the same age, so the, their peers. And this is very important because it's an international indicator of morbidity, mortality, health decline, and health decline and service demand. 88% of the population are indicated that they experience social isolation. The top three respondents in relation to health deterioration talk about health decline and a reduction in their overall capacity 
uh, of uh, capacity to engage with family members and peers. So these are three main indicators of health deterioration and well-being. None of the findings were surprising to those of us who interact all the time with people who are homebound or bedridden. However, I think that for others, some of the findings might be a revelation. Um, what might surprise people most is how many of the cohort are not elderly, which is consistent with the unpublished ABS data that shows the majority to be under 65. The exclusion of this group from primary health care stands in stark contrast to the stated intentions to assist Australians to better manage chronic conditions in order to avoid unnecessary hospital admissions. To summarise, we have to say that frail, homebound and bedridden people are marginalised, underserved, under-researched populations. So they are mostly females, affected by multiple chronic conditions and rare diseases. They are not always recognised as disability and that's why they don't receive support, why they are marginalised, because they, they don't have access to primary care and they sometimes don't have access to a GP. As Penelope was mentioning, in order to access telehealth today, you have to have been in a consultation with a GP in person. And so it, this telehealth service is denied for these populations. So the other, the other thing that I wanted to say is that the Australian healthcare system has been designed around patient physical attendance, and that has, has to change. So it is necessary to inform the co-design of permanent post-pandemic telehealth solutions for this sector of the population, where they can access primary care and they can access a, a modernized uh, Medicare system that provide flexible services for them, primary and allied health care. There's still some writing and publishing to be done on the work we've already um, finished. The focus is shifting now toward working with partners to develop innovative tools to support the health needs and social inclusion of people who are homebound or bedridden. Highlighting the unseen, frail, homebound and bedridden people. Imagine living in a never-ending COVID-19 lockdown, feeling alone and socially isolated. Not because of the virus, but because of mobility or health issues. A lack of help and increasing dysfunction is the reality for many Australians. We involve Even the researchers, consumers, experts in psychology and different areas, and a standard network connected to Penelope of people living within homebound, uh, with an, within a homebound condition and situation. And we collected all these data and experiences and pictures and created a summary of what is like. Uh, being uh, what it's like to be a homebound person. So we try to communicate that. And we also try to communicate that this doesn't need to be the case. We have the skills and the capacities and the resources to make this population, to take out this population from this marginalized situation. Mm -hmm.